and H2K are going to pick up the 2-0 over Fnatic. Losses in the LCS can be devastating. The bigger the stage, the more crushing the defeat. But Coach Daylor has broken down what it takes to be a dominant championship team into a simple formula. Communication plus teamwork plus respect equals winning. In a League of Legends professional, it's so much more than just clicking and playing the game. If you have enough skill, then communication is the most important thing. If you are communicating, you can say which move you're gonna do and you're gonna tell information about what the enemy is doing. You need to be able to interact with your teammates and be able to build a good relationship. It's gonna be interesting to see the, the, com the communication of these four guys. This is gonna be one of the biggest separating factors for the players, because you have players like Double G, who has the most recent highest level competitive experience, but then you also have players like Noko on the opposite end of the spectrum, who has literally no competitive experience, as far as I'm aware, mm -hmm. and who will literally understand no part and will need to be taught everything from scratch. I think most important thing is care about teammate. Be as a human being, I guess, respect others and try to show empathy when someone's having a tough time. All in all, just not be so selfish. Team Fnatic spends 10 months out of the year living, sleeping, and working in one gaming house. Player compatibility is paramount for team success because the pressure is always high and there is virtually no privacy. Yeah, you just grow together as a group. And then once the world comes around, you've been together for a while already, you understand each other on a deeper, deeper level, emotionally, and the way you think. That way you're able to perform much better than if you're uh, new to each other, even though perhaps you might be better individuals. So we've been looking at how you guys adapt to different situations. Um, so now we're gonna look at how you play well with others and a little bit about how you kind of communicate and approach problem solving. So we're going to be doing a 2v2 tournament. Now the way it's going to work is you're all going to swap around and you're all going to get a chance to play with each other. It's going to be best of three. The two versus two tournament is simple. The team that kills the other team first wins. Each candidate will get the opportunity to play with one another. For every win, you get one point. For every loss, you get zero points. The player at the end with most points wins. Let, let's get it done, boys. The two teams separate to strategize. You're not comfortable with Ash, are you? Well, we can choose anything. Because so. the thing is, I think Noka is good at Ash, and I think Noka is going to be playing Giddy Carry. So he has been practicing Ash. Like, if you don't like it, then we ban that shit. I could go for it, but there's no point. No, that's what I'm asking. If, like, if do we you first, want Ash if, or not? If, if. Double G and Hosen agree to make Ash one of the three champions not allowed in the game. However, once the game begins. Oh, whoa, 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 calm down. Calm this down. is hella fine. We don't give a shit. Hey, hey, what is this? No, don't you? Yeah. Like, the strategy was to kill Ash, but he just picked Tom Kench. Without discussing with his teammate, Double G banned a different champion. Ultimately, their skill wins out. Boom, bitch! Boom, bitch! One me two, motherfuckers! Good job. No matter who Double G is paired with, his team wins. Marley wave, bro. Again. Careful, back away from me. Nice! That's it. We did it. And again. My champion pool is insane. Like, not only in the AD card at all, but I, as you can see, they're banning three of my champions. They cannot do anything against me. This sucks so much because, like, I'm carrying these people, you know? I'm doing most of the work, and they're getting the wins as well. So that's fucking annoying. That's bullshit. Like, I'm the MVP, 100%. Where I get my confidence from is I have played against all the players basically from both North America and Europe. And when the World Championship has been in Europe, I had played against all the Koreans. I know that at my top level, I can be a world-class player for sure. If someone is being really annoying and all, I just mute him. I just don't mind about the other people. I just like play for myself and like enjoy myself. Get home, bitch! Boom! I like the taste of your ass, bitch! Boom! Kaboom! Double G has revealed another side to his personality. I've actually played Double G before. Uh, so he was very, he, he was toxic. He's a casual EU player, basically, because a lot of them are very toxic here in the game. I had a bad attitude. I had a bad attitude towards other people, and like the past just keeps uh, returning back to me. And I mean, no, I cannot do anything about that. That's how I was, and I know that it was bad. 
A toxic player is someone that is negative all the time, spouts racist and or vulgar language at teammates, and either leaves the game early or finds ways to help out the opposing team. Riot Games, the makers of League of Legends, have dedicated an entire department of scientists and psychologists to ridding the sport of toxicity. This includes monitoring chat boxes as well as allowing other players to report bad behavior. Currently, all professional players must undergo a thorough background check. If their accounts are deemed toxic, players are suspended from all professional play until they're able to complete a rehabilitation program. With double G, it all depends on, the, on like the team environment. So if they don't like him, then like, he's gone. He's, like, a lot of coaches don't don't deal with that. Actually, no no coaches would deal with that, to be honest. Definitely double G um, is a main skill, but I think one of the concerns I have about him is that he may have problems playing well with others. We've all been in gaming houses, we know what it's like. It's, uh, it's difficult to be uh, living with someone who's constantly telling you everything you're doing wrong all the time. Yeah. You know, sometimes you need that guy who's like, no, it's okay, you know, it'll go better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, attitude is, is, you know, in my opinion, really important. As, like, I don't expect to get a lot of respect from LCS players or whatever because, you know, they have achieved more than me and, like, obviously they're better. Well, some of them at least. And uh, it just annoys me when some random, random person who's bad at the game who's probably bad socially and he's probably like fat ugly or whatever he has the the nerve to like talk shit to me you know that's when i snap you know you shouldn't be doing that and then i tell them how it is like you know you should shut the fuck up this is a serious problem an elimination is coming up and even though double g just won a sequence of powerful victories he isn't as safe as he thinks I don't think he'll ever get to the professional scene, none of the upper echelons of the professional scene, unless he learns to take feedback from people who are lower level than him. Because just because they're lower ranked than he doesn't mean that they don't know something he doesn't. And to immediately write it off on the grounds that they're lower ranked than he is, is I think foolhardy and it's just arrogant.